The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician on this 10th day of January. My pleasure to be here. Dow is up uh, 10 points at 23,888. Made a... Um, Recovery high yesterday in the 23,985 level. And that whole millennial area is always what we're looking for here in the Chapman Wave methodology. The 23,000 uh, or 24,000, all those thousand point levels become an issue. On the way down, we just splice right through it. Slice through it, didn't even splice through it. But now on the way up, I imagine that going into the 23,900s could in fact be some resistance. We've got that resistance. However, the pullback that we saw earlier in the morning, overnight, going into this morning with a doji candle of yesterday, going underneath yesterday's low, is telling me that I am probably correct in saying to subscribers to my opening call that uh, this is a pullback. It should be fairly brief and fairly shallow, not too deep. And then we should go on to a leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology, all of which these techniques I'll be teaching in my all-day webinar. Unusual to have an all-day webinar. I have them every, every, every year, maybe once, maybe twice. And in this particular instance, we're looking at Chapman Wave methodology. We're looking at all these things that go to, if you're looking at the left side chart, the V-shaped pattern, the way the MACD crossed negative on that way down and then crossed positive after that very sharp sell-off on the 26th of December. And now the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, these green bars, these vertical bars are very positive. The distance between the nine period differential, the green line and the red line, very positive. Stochastic finally got to 80%. It's at 84% today. That's what we're looking at. But now it has to flatten out in the 80% or higher area or else it just makes that two, three day pop over 80% and reverses back down, just like you had here where it attempted to rally, where it did that in November, all those rallies failed very quickly. I think this one has a little bit more legs to the upside before we can establish whether or not the buy mode that is in place now in the daily chart of the Dow and the S&P and the Qs and the IWM are able to generate the same kind of power into the weekly chart we got options expiration a week from tomorrow which is the reason why i said to subscribers who had bought the dow uh, at the uh, 228 call january call uh, that expires on the 18th uh, and bought it at seven dollars and twenty cents i had said if you had a few of them uh day or two, so i go i said take take something off and that was at 1075 that was really a fabulous uh, gain that was a, almost a 50% gain. And then yesterday, it actually hit 12. That was a 66.6% .6 gain. I said to subscribers, even if you've got a few, whether you've got a few or you've got one, I'm anticipating that this would be a good time to take it off. So between 10.20 and 11.20, uh, not time-wise, but price-wise this morning, could have taken it off with a really great, uh, great, uh, option call, premium, very nice gain. Now we've got to manage this in a different way because you've got a week to go for expiration. So all the few, all the, if you're wrong, the, the decline in the premium is very quick. If you're right, the, the incline is initially quick and then it kind of evens out. So now it's a lot more difficult to play, but I think we might have a play in two weeks from Friday. However, with that said, we're looking at the Dow having strong resistance. If you go to my day, my 120 minute chart, yeah, I think I've got it right there. Yes. For my subscribers, every day I give a very comprehensive call on the markets. Here's all the resistance 24,088, 24,185. And now the previous resistance points that were just 
punch through as if it was nothing, like a hot knife through butter. Uh, 23,623 is major support. That whole area of 23,600 to the high 23,500s. Uh, uh, All right. Now let me see if I can keep going here. I, I, I have had some packets. I'm doing this remotely, so I've had a couple of issues. I might lose my sound, but it looks to me like the, the charts that you will be seeing are going to work well. It's my side of it here. They could suddenly disappear, and then I'll have to refresh. So in the meantime, let's just do the numbers. Let's go back. I don't know whether that was a note to me. Okay, that no, wasn't a note to me. Okay, there might be questions in the den. I'm not able to see the den. I'll do that in the break where um, I can see it a little bit better. So Dow's up five. S&P. S&P is trading uh, down 0.56 at 2584. Also, this is now only a leg B. Also, a great move to the upside. MACD strong stochastics at 88%. Very nice. And uh, there should be a lot of support. Just uh, what was the low today? The low is 25.62. Uh, yesterday's high was uh, 20. I can't remember offhand. 25.95. 0.32. So I think that that's going to be a little bit of a problem just going into maybe tomorrow, and then we'll see if we can get a leg C. Now, if this is only going to a leg C, and the Dow will be going to a leg D, I will go with the S&P, which is a little behind, to say that the chances are the Dow might go to an E on the way up, and the S&P goes to a D. As long as we don't crack absolutely key support, 25.42 will be major, major support that has to hold going into next week. <clears throat> QQQ, one, two, three. Uh, this is the Invest QQQ Trust Series trading at 160.44, down 38 cents. Oh, this is a peak C if there's no new uh, recovery high today. MACD is very strong. Stochastics at 87%. And the uh, weekly chart is finally pierced the nine period exponential moving average. That's a good sign. Helping the monthly chart, which is still a very poor chart. I'm looking at 162-ish to, to be the real test. 162 to 163 to be the real test for the QQQ. Let's go to the IWM. IWM trading right now to up 28 cents at 143.19. Be one of the strongest. In fact, did it make a new recovery high today? 143.39? 145, yes, this is still leg C. Excellent action. IWM acting, you'll, and you'll see it right here in my E mini futures. The IW, uh, the, the, the E mini made a high just um, about at exactly noon in the two minute chart, around about just over 2591, right on 2591, and trading now down 2583. You see that peak D? I put it in a little down, upside down. Um, little V-shaped pattern there, and that uh, circles, that, that is essentially says should be a pullback from here. This is a peak F in the five-minute chart. Think of this as the daily, weekly, monthly. So the five-minute chart, the middle one, has given me a sell signal, not yet quite a sell mode. I need to see a, a, another close below the 40 moving average, and a leg deep to the deck up. In the 10 minute chart, we'll see if I get a peak here. And then there'll be a bit of a hiatus, a lunchtime hiatus. Plus, the traffic guy conditions hour. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi right, everyone, we're back. So we're looking at the IWM, which is up, as I said, up 0.36. This is very important because, remember, I have this visual picture and it's, it's not really easy to explain. Uh, it's one of those things where you kind of live with certain patterns in your mind. You don't ever have to explain it to people. They're just there. So let me just try to explain this. Going to a top, you invariably make tops at different times in the cycle. The NYA, the New York Stock Exchange, made its top major all-time high in January a year ago. The Dow made a high, all-time high, January 26 a year ago. But then it pulled back sharply into the February low. Let me just do this visually so you can see what I mean. I, I, dear. So what happened was it made a low in February and then ran up sharply and then came back down and made a lower low. It went to 23,344. That was 16 points below the initial low in February. It was the only one of the indices to actually break the February low, the key, the key indices. But then it ran up in, you remember I was talking about a potential cup pattern, that maybe there's a rectangle formation that you outline, and that there should be a rally to exactly on or just above that high of January, and then we have to see what happens. And that became clearer as we moved along. Eventually, the Dow went to 26,951 in October, and that was the high, but it never closed above the January high. And I drew this left side, right side. I said, look, there's a problem here. We've got the left side, very strong, MACD stochastic, on balance volume. When you went to the right side, right side to the October high, the MACD was much weaker. The stochastic was very much weaker. On balance volume was the only one that was really following price movement because there had been so many green candles. That's why the on balance volume, this is Joe Granville's uh, methodology that I never, I, I originally got into technical analysis because of that. I had these full scap uh, books with the left side page and the right side page with these lines and every single line I'd write the, the opening, the close, the low and the, the um, high 
of key indexes, a bunch of the Dow stocks. I mean, I just don't, I, I've still got those notes. All the way across, and I had vertical lines to give each index, the XMI, the, uh, just every one of those, the NDX. So it was the composite index at the time. So, um, and I used to add, I used to have a running total on balance volume of key Dow stocks. <laughs> it took so much time. And eventually I found out that some stocks went to highs without on balance volume or had fantastic rallies without on balance volume improving and others needed it. Eastman Kodak was an example of one that really went with the price movement of the on balance volume. Merck just did its own thing. So I learned a tremendous amount at that particular time. And eventually uh, in uh, 1982, I got this massive buy signal based on this particular work that I was doing. I got it in July, July the 2nd, 1982. I remember that day very well. And the actual low, um, that might have been a low, but it might not have been the actual low. Actual low might have been a little later, but in August, we got a spectacular rally to the upside. And I, I was at that time fully invested. I just used to sit there patiently waiting for things to unfold. And it was it was really good. And that's when I finally learned, you know what? Unbalanced volume, there's just too many hiccups. It, it's just, it doesn't, didn't work for me. Maybe it worked for other people. But once I discovered when computerization came in that they had unbalanced volume as a trend line, I could understand that. Look at that trend line. Look at that top in October. Look at that weekly chart. It gave that top right there. The, the ictus, the high, was three bars, two bars before the actual high. What a nice hint that there was a problem. So I've learned to use that. Look at the low that was made right here. The, the low in the unbalanced volume right there, the week of the 28th of December, one week before the actual low of 26. That was the 26th of December. So how could that be? Oh, the week that started, that went through. Okay, so it was it was a tad early. All right, so I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, what we've got is you've got the New York Stock Exchange, the very broad New York Stock Exchange, cannot rule it out. It is as important as almost any other one, having a really nice uh, rally from the 31% decline of 10,723 that was made on the 26th of December. Now it's in leg B, really nice, 10,700 to 11,700. That is a 9% gain, 10% gain. That's really good action. And we're looking at the weekly, just hitting the nine period, it's a pink nine period moving average in the weekly chart. It's improving the monthly chart. So you can see that highs are made sequentially. Look at the semiconductors. March, it makes it high. Look at the XLK, really important index. The, this is the tech index. It made, it's made its high in October. Look at the S&P. It made its high in September. Uh, there are September the, uh, at 2940.91. And yet, look at the lows. The lows were almost all made on that two-day period, 24th and 26th of December. So lows are, uh, you remember March the 6th when we got that buy signal in the Dow at uh, 2560 or something, 50, 5650, I think it was in the diamonds, the day of the March 6, 2009 low, but September, um, sorry, the 9th of March was the low of the S&P, but all there again, two days, it was Friday and then the, the Monday. So lows are made uh, not sequentially, but uh, simultaneously, and highs are very often rotation. Now, I'm thinking that this is still going to be a rotational low and that we're going to have a three, maybe a three month, four month, could even be a six month period where we get a retest, I'm not sure, of some of the indices, not all. Okay, enough with that. Let's just get to the numbers. We want to look at uh, gold. Gold is now down two and a half. Um, it's having a high level consolidation just as the dollar was. Um, moving higher and gold really held very well even though it was coming down so what we've got now is that the dollar it's they've reversed it 
The gold is the lead indicator out of the two uh, opposing forces, and the dollar is the one that now touched the 200 period moving average, hit 95, uh, low 95s, and what we're looking at was 95.03 this morning, 97.71 was the high, so two and a half points, that's, that's a big move down. Wait, well, this is a very important because the nine period moving average in the monthly chart, it just touched it, it's holding above it now. So this is going to be important for the dollar in the longer term aspect. I'm still thinking that the gold has um, the benefit of the doubt just at this particular moment because I think the dollar needs a little more time, maybe not so much more in price. The EUR USD, as we're about to go to a break, the euro dollar currency pair, nice move up, went almost to the 200 period moving average in the daily chart with a high this morning of 1.599. Now it's down a little bit, 1.150. Oh, I'll be right. Back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, we're back. So we're looking at the uh, USD JPY, that is the yen, and it's trading at 108.27. It's come off of the 105.18 low of about uh, six days ago very nicely, but that is called the Chapman Wave Roman Candle right there in the daily. It happens to also be in the weekly, and it says very clearly that in the next, usually I say within two bars, but this is going to be a little different, uh, being a currency and all. Uh, funnily enough, it's right now in the monthly, but the monthly has weeks and weeks to go before it's, uh, the month of January is finished. So um, I'm looking at this and I'm saying if there is a, a close on a 
I'm going to make it a full day basis below 106.70. There's a real good chance we're going to go and retest the 105.18 low. I think that's actually going to happen. I would, in fact, be surprised if I should be drawing in an arch formation right here. Arch. And that arch should be coming like that. All right. I'm drawing it in. We'll see what happens. Um, and that would coincide with the dollar going a little bit lower. I need to also look at just a question about the EUR, the USD, a uh, very quick uh, peak A to peak B to T to D to E to F. It isn't that quick. The B A to B to C, that is not, this is not the lightning bolt pattern that is spoken about so often on TFNN. Uh, that is where A to B equals C to D, a straight line down rallies, and then there's a straight line down again, and the measurement should be about the same or greater. Um, in this particular instance, I'm talking about higher highs labeled alphabetically in the Chapman Wave sequence. Up to G, it goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, E, peak F, and peak G. In this case, we've gone to a leg F. This could be only either an F or an A. I think it's an F. I think there's a little bit of a hiatus now as the dollar rebounds just a little bit over the coming few days, and gold takes a bit of a breather before it pushes higher. So that should correspond to the euro dollar. The euro uh, right now uh, has 1.1578 the 200 period exponential moving average on the daily as a target. I would not be surprised in this whole move if we see the euro go all the way to 1.169, which is the 200 period weekly exponential moving average uh, towards that level. I don't know if it'll hit it, but there. And then I think gold starts a, a quite a big break to the downside. Maybe again, not so much in points, but it takes time and the dollar has a rebound and where, how the dollar rebounds at that point will tell me about the rest of the year for the dollar it's going to be really important let me just have a quick look at the british pound here I had a question about that yeah british pound nothing to see here oh it could easily at 1.279 uh, that's a positive roman candle but if it takes out 1.26 at any stage intraday and then holds it into the close that day that's going to be very negative. At this point, it looks like, if anything, there'll be a little bit of a surprise to the upside. Um, how much is a big question. Enough with that. I was also asked about wheat. Let me ask, does wheat, um, is there anything I ever learned in French? And that is down minus six at 514. We were looking at a nice move to the upside. And I said earlier that if it can get into the 523, 527 area, That'll be really good for the weekly chart. It needs that to help. The daily has to help the weekly chart by, by this is a little bit too much of a pullback. At this point, I'm thinking too much of a pullback. It's going to take a little more time to get into the 527s. Better hold 510. Otherwise, there's a real problem in the weekly chart. I was asked about WS. The S is the uh, soy continuous contract. Look at that deep correction down 1.92%, down 17 and a half at 906 and a quarter. Mm, this is not good. If it held steady, even just held the 917 area, and then two days time it went to 929, I'd say that is excellent action. This is an excellent action. Very weak, very weak, not good at all. So TRCCI, I'm all over the show here because this is such an important week for the close and for the price movement that we're seeing. Uh, this is the uh, Thomson Reuters uh, equal weight, I believe. Yeah, equal weight commodity index. Let me just double check. Yeah. Thomson Reuters equal weight commodity index trading at 403 made it low on the around about the 31st, 390.38. Yeah, that was the low. The low of the year was the last day of the year. And uh, no, not, yeah, of the year. Oh, my, yeah. It goes all the way back to 2017, a test of the low of 385 back in June of, of 2017. Yes, this is really important. Come on, you need, the Fed wants to see commodities rise. The, they don't really want to see it 
but they have no choice. They want to see it because you want to see some signs of inflation. That's what they're looking for. They don't want deflation. Deflation is one of the worst things you could ever have. You cannot raise prices, and everybody's vying for the same product. It just gets worse and worse. So they want to see commodities. So this index needs to get to 407.50. At that point, I'll say, okay, finally, the 411, 200 period moving average is coming into focus. Um, that weekly chart has, yes, yeah, same thing. Weekly chart has downtrend resistance there. No, actually, that's not. That's at uh, 47. Yeah, yeah, that's at around about 407. So close above 408 would be very good and suggest that you could, yeah, that's what I'd say. Then you can get to the 411 area. So it, it better not get back to 395 over the next two weeks. That'll be a terrible action. Okay, let's get going. We've got the we've got TLT to look at. The TLT right now is trading down nine cents at 124.14. As long as it doesn't go into the 124s, it means that money can come out of the so-called safety of bonds into the insecurity, but now the security of the equities that are moving higher. So this is very important. If the TLT slides under 120, closes under 120, I think that might help the market quite a bit. Let's look at crude oil. Crude oil right now is trading. It had a fabulous day yesterday, a little higher today, down at this point, down 11 cents at 52.25, but it did hit 52.70 this morning. And that, in fact, is still leg C. We're always expecting leg T. Let me just double check. 58.70. Yes, it just by a couple of cents, 12 cents, it went to a higher high today. This is important. You want to see the 53s and then the 54s, especially the 55s over the next week and a half in crude oil. That'll be a positive, I think, for the market as well. Uh, I think I finished everything. I know I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? I'm not forgetting anything because I did Yields, crude oil. I've done everything. Okay. Here we go back to, oh, the XLF. Yeah, go to the questions. XLF. XLF right now is up a little bit. Unchanged. Oh, it's down a penny. 2442, acting quite nicely, but not great. It's just acting quite nicely. And this is very important because at 2443, NACD is really good. Stochastics at 91%. I, I'm disappointed. The XLF should be in the 2485 to 2515 area at this point. It's lagging. I don't like it lagging. I want it to be leading. If it leads, it'll tell me that this is going to be a much stronger rally than many people have anticipated. Uh, this is just setting up a little flag. It's a yellow flag. That's all. Uh, it's just a caution flag. I want to see the... Um, we're going to go to I had all these questions. Oh, yes, Caterpillar. This is very interesting. Look, Caterpillar, this is a China play. Is up a dollar seventy at one thirty one ninety seven. It's actually rebounded pretty well. And I'm I'm getting becoming more and more impressed with that weekly chart. I'll talk about it when we get back, because I think that Caterpillar is going to be an important component for the whole China play. When we get back, I'll be back. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, copper, 
the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, everyone. We're back and we're looking at the SLX, which is the steel sector. <clears throat> this is going to be very important. The cap weight falling axis, that's a declining cone with lower highs and lower lows, uh, has been pierced to the upside. That's a good sign. <clears throat> the 50 period moving average, which is around about 3680, um, is above. It's a 3764, up, uh, down 25 cents. Peak B, if there's no new recovery high today. Just about to touch the nine period experiential moving average of the weekly chart, but look at this monthly. Look at this arch. Now, in my webinar on uh, Chapman Wave Techniques, I'm going to be discussing these arch patterns in great detail. They are so important. Look at the way the MACD turned down with the price. Look at the way Stochastic already started down way earlier. That's a huge negative divergence. Now, what's really important is that it took out the most important low that was made back from 2015 in the summer of 2015, May and June, in the 35 area. It went to the 34s, but now it's at the 3764 level. So this is the arch formation that I always talk about. What are the technicals like now as to what they were? And is there a possible that we're about to start a second arch formation, one like this? And how high will it go? Rather than if I do an inside, now this is a technique that I don't discuss very often. If I had an inside arch to the outside, think of it as a track, right? That says to me that if there was a break under 33.50, that is significantly under the 34 support, 33.50, a close on a weekly basis below 33.50, the steel stocks are going to be in trouble for a while. That would be very negative. That would be a close below key support on the left side. Mm -mm, not good. That's why this rally all around, I'm just looking every, look at Amazon. Amazon had a fabulous takeoff from the low that was made, 1307 round number low, had a 2050.50 high back, all time high, a week of the 7th of September, uh, 13. So that's 600, uh, that's over 600 points to the downside. That is serious stuff. However, look at the candle. In the weekly chart, it broke this first support. Now I'm going to put in a second support level. Uh, resistance, I'm oh, sorry, on the downside support. And this is on making green. And you could do it on time alone. I don't want it just on time. I want it on price. That means if this leg A is able to extend by tomorrow afternoon into the 1680s, that would be very positive. That will say perhaps this weekly chart right here, the monthly chart right here, it will be a soft landing for the MACD, just a small decline as it makes a negative day, a t turn to the downside because if it drops back under 1500, no, I'd say 1490 in the next two to three weeks, 
there's a real good chance that that um, monthly MACD is going to become a lot more negative. Stochastic already is down at 62%. I don't want to see it go much lower than that. And you've got a flat stochastic in the uh, weekly chart. So that same price led by the daily chart has to be of significance. And you want to see Amazon, well, I don't think I can even say two weeks. I would say by before options expiration next week, 1700 round number should be a target and it should close above that actually and that would be really positive all around all right so we're looking at some of those stocks if you want we've got netflix so what was it some news or something the other day had a big spike up oh this is a good move so netflix goes from i haven't done all the notational work on netflix that's interesting i thought i had no all-time high right there so it goes to no wait a minute There we go. Pulling this across. Ah, I thought that was not right. I knew I had done all the work. They made a peak G. I remember this. It was an unusual peak G at the top at 423.21, June the 21st. Then it made the double top pattern, that cup formation. Remember, this is, oh, these are the techniques we're going to go over over and over again in my webinar. This is exactly the type of thing we look at. That same as the Dow. You remember, I was looking at the left side right there look how strong the technicals are look how very weak the technicals are right here um and in the july high lower high all right so now i'm going to do this within the so that's a pattern that we might see in the inversion with an arch formation so the technicals here will be checked out i'm going to go to roy in boston roy how are you yes i, I pass all pretty good Happy um, Happy Thursday. And happy Thursday to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was wondering if you might be able to tell me, um, uh, talk a little bit about where the market's going now. You know, what what you're forecasting as far as it, you know, as far as if it's heading lower or you know, training in a range. And uh, and I wanted to see if you might be able to look at a Vanguard fund for me. Would that be okay? That's fine. I'm looking at right now, if I can just move, I'm using one computer where I usually have a multitude of computers. So VF, so this is VFS, MX, Tom Sam. Ah, V, V, got it. I wonder why I didn't get it. So this is the Vanguard Index Trust, No. What does that say? TT stock market, total stock market. Okay, good. I'm all set. So if you're looking at this, oh, I don't have it. It's on my other computer. Usually I'm looking at the Vanguard, which I've got the Vanguard. No, the Wilshire 5000. I wonder if I can do that. Let me just see because it's the same thing and I've got it all notated. So let me just check. Is it SW5000 or is it dollar? No, it's dollar. W five thousand. It should be it pretty much the same chart. There it is, and I've got it all notated. Yes, this is the Wilshire five thousand. I I believe I'm going to check it out in a moment, but I think it's exactly the same pattern. We're in leg B in the daily. This is what I'm looking at. The Wilshire five thousand, which is the total market index, which should be very similar. I don't think there's too much change between the two uh, in the glance that I had at the patterns. That's why I recognize it. Um, I'm oh, looking yeah. at this and I'm saying, so your question, I'm, I'm going to imply something. Your question is implicit in your question is, was this low, the December low, a serious enough low to consider that now we should be making higher highs and higher lows, maybe a retest of the area, but basically we're on our way up and all the worst is over. May I ask you, is that your question? Yes, it is. Exactly my question, yes. Okay, that is my question as well. That's why I knew exactly what the question was. Um, <laughs> I have no choice because of the technicals to put a down, to put a down arrow in the monthly chart with a doji top. This is exactly what we sometimes see at bottoms. Very seldom do we see it at the top. Tiny little candle um, in that must have been October. No, that was September. 
tiny little candle and the monster candle down uh, sideways candle and the monster candle down for December now January January is an inside bar a pretty nice looking bar this is what I'm going to say to you I'm going to say to you there's a break coming up are you able to hold and I'll give you my thoughts as soon as we return yes Yes. Okay, Thank we've you. got Roy in Boston. It's so funny because I just emailed the Roy in Boston about playing tennis, and I thought, "Wow, well, isn't that a good?" I didn't even know you listened to the show. She does. So it's a different. I'm certain role. you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Don't forget, you've got Steve coming up. You've got Dave coming up. You've got Tom O'Brien coming up. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call. Check out my newsletter. And also check out the webinar that I'm doing on all these different techniques I've discussed here. Left side, right side, price, time match, the arch, the cup, the V-shaped patterns, everything, the MACD, stochastic. All right. Now we're on with Roy in Boston. Roy, I wanted to say to you that the real question for me now is that the 200 period exponential moving average of the weekly chart is at 24,875. So at 24, that's about uh, 2,000 points lower. But most important about this, this is on the on the um, on the Wilshire 5000. So it also had about a 19, 20 percent decline, just like the S&P and many of the other indices. What I am looking at is I don't think that when this is all over, that it'll be much more than 22 to maybe 23 percent of a give back. I could be wrong, and this could be the big one to the downside. I just don't think it is. I think that the whole idea that I was talking about in the in the beginning of rotational tops. And sometimes a synchronous low tells me that even the synchronous low saw a rotational move to the downside in percentage terms and in time. So I'm thinking that there could be a retest 
and it could get worse. It could go under. But I'm looking at this, and I'm saying that there's a really good chance that the low that we've made is actually a really serious low. I'm doing a lot of work on the VIX tomorrow, my Tiger Technicians Hour. I'm going to spend a little time talking about the VIX index and what happened. Uh, we didn't get that climactic intraday move that we often get with a big V-shaped turnaround. Rather, it was almost like an overnight thing. So I'm looking at this, and I do believe that the, at the midpoint – of your index that you're looking at now and the index that you're looking at, the Vanguard, I'm looking at the Wilshire, the midpoint is really going to be the test. Can these indices in this particular move now get as close as a 50% to a 45% retracement to the upside and then come down? Or do they fail before that? So I'm going to talk a lot about it tomorrow. But what I am going to say to you is that my contention was going into December that the bulk of the move should be done in this move and that the rest of it will take time rather than price and that there will be price to the downside. I think some of these won't take out the low that was made in December and some will, but I think that this was a pretty serious low. I hope I'm answering your question. I'll do a lot more with it tomorrow morning. So thanks for calling in. Larry I Pesavento has just started brand new service Fibonacci 24 7 and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the markets opened and even on weekends each Monday you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out and throughout the week when warranted Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day this will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in Larry Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.